surprising, I think, absolutely nobody. Spider-Man No Way Home, after we learned, had made $31.7 million on Christmas, was set to dominate the Christmas weekend and its second weekend at box office. I don't think anybody expected this film to demolish this bad, though. Let's talk about the absolute crushing blow it delivered across its second weekend. Well, when it comes to the three-day box office weekend, Spider-Man No Way Home officially made up for 53% of all the tickets sold for the weekend, with a total of $81.5 million that they made in the United States alone. This again is huge. Previously, when I did the video talking about the Christmas day, I said it would probably land somewhere between 80 to 85. And that's honestly like the, oh my God, I can't believe it actually hit these numbers. So that falls in line. Unfortunately, um, some other films that came out did not, did not do as good as expected. But again, they were going up against a heavy hitter like Spider-Man. Obviously, the competition came down to two other films, this being Sing 2, which I have never heard of, or if I have, I just put in the back of my brain to, oh, this doesn't concern me because I don't have to talk about it. So um, pardon my lack of knowledge for what it even is or that there was a Sing 1. But the other big one is obviously The Matrix. Now, um, this one is interesting because you have to factor in HBO and you also have to factor in that the marketing for this film was so... Um, well, dead, because anytime they released anything, it happened to be right before or right after Disney or Sony would drop something for Spider-Man or something else MCU. And it was just kind of buried and lost in the shuffle. Unfortunately, these two films are rather struggling at the box office, all things considered. But Spider-Man finds itself up there with, you know, the best of them, which has got to be real good for everybody involved. And honestly, I will not be surprised if like, 36 to 48 hours from now i'm making a video that this has officially become sony's biggest film because it looks like it will i don't think this thing suddenly drops off the face of the earth and just sort of disappears into oh that this thing has um officially stopped making money no this thing is going to have some legs and i think that's important here and i also think that when you look at the uh bigger picture here for spider-man it's kind of apparent that people are very much interested in re-watching this film multiple times and it's still dominating a lot of discussion again i'm in a uh, chat with a bunch of uh, big cbc fans and oh we talk and you know i come in and i see what they're saying and i kind of gauge some of the conversation and what they're saying about their friends and i won't name names here just because of uh, privacy reasons but i do see many of them also post about the reception that their family had and the reaction and going back so again there is something here that's pushing this film quite clearly like the pandemic doesn't even exist, which has got to be in the power of how much people wanted this film. Now, at the same time, The Matrix, I mean, the first one was revolutionary and they were pitching this like a soft reboot. Why it's struggling, I have no idea. But again, I think there's a lot of factors in this and maybe time has just moved on and The Matrix isn't what people want anymore, especially one that's getting mixed reviews.